All right, guys, I haven't had much chance to look at the stat sheet, but it's pretty evident in the first half their sense of urgency was much greater than ours. They played harder than we did. They drove us to the basket. Their reactions were quicker and more aggressive, more focused. And uh, at halftime, to be honest with you, I felt very lucky that we were just down three and told them that if they would change that and get a greater sense of urgency in the second half, um, stop turning the ball over, uh, that we'd be there at the end and have a chance to win. And I think that uh, uh, Kerr said we only had three turnovers in the second half, <coughs> and one of them was RJ's drive in there that I don't know what he was going to do. But uh, uh, I think that was big for us, but I also think we competed better on the defensive end of the floor. We got a couple of block shots. And uh, and then on the offense, uh, I think of all people, Leakey uh, last night scores one layup, his only basket, but tonight, uh, he had three big uh, jump shots for us in the second half. I know one of them was for three, and maybe two of them was for three. Uh, but I thought that was big for us. RJ made some baskets. Uh, we went with the smaller lineup a lot uh, with Caleb and uh, RJ uh, in there together. Um, I think they were, gave us another ball handler because their defense was pretty aggressive, and we were turning it over. But uh, bottom line is Garrison – Tried to play tonight and tried to do some uh, great things for us and did some great things for us, but uh, he was still a little hampered. But uh, uh, I thought that Armando and, and Dayron particularly gave us some big plays up front as well. But uh, uh, I'd say RJ and uh, uh, Leakey were the ones that were the stars in the second half. Bridget Condon, go ahead. Coach, what did you learn about your team growth tonight you know after they didn't fold when things weren't going perfectly in the first half well we've we've done that a few other times I mean a couple of weeks ago we played uh, Florida State and they had kicked us in the first half and and we came back we didn't do it nearly as well as we wanted to at uh, uh, Syracuse but uh, uh, last night they made a run at us and we had had a 14 or 15 point lead at half whatever it was and then we made a three to start the second half and so now it's 17 or 18 and then they made a run at us, so we bounced back. But I think this was a tougher uh, test on something like that, and and I thought we handled it pretty doggone well. But uh, we still still have to make some shots. You can't uh, keep shooting forty. What is it? Forty four percent for the game, and uh, our big guys made a lot of shots. I mean, Armando seven for nine. Uh, uh, do, do, do. I'm trying to find Dayron four for seven, so they're shooting over 50%. So we got to get some perimeter guys to either make shots or stop taking bad ones. Brian Keys. Roy, you've talked a lot about how who starts doesn't really matter. It matters who ends, but you just acknowledge Garrison was still a little hampered after the ankle injury. You know, looking forward to tomorrow, have you given any thought to maybe going back to the Dayron and Armando starting front court? If Garrison is. Uh, is healthy enough to do the job defensively, the answer would be no. Guys, he's a senior. He's played his buns off for years and years, and I do believe in being loyal. And uh, we decided to sit him down last night because he couldn't do it. And uh, I don't think that uh, uh, Dayron and uh, Walker and Armando did the good things tonight that they did last night, even though we had some good moments. So to answer your question, if he's – uh, fully healthy and can go, he's going to play. I mean, he's earned that. And uh, I'm not a guy that tries to change lineup every day or every time the wind blows. CL? Roy, uh, they were effective of keeping you guys off the offensive boards early on and, and even into the second half. What changed for you guys? Was was it a matter, matter of that sense of urgency you talked about or or was it something else? Well, we always feel like we're going to try to rebound the ball for 40 minutes. And uh, uh, Virginia Tech is really good defensively, and they do a nice job of boxing out. At halftime, we talked about we had to make an extra effort to, to get off the box out and had to make an extra effort to, to get to the offensive board. And I think Armando did that better than anybody. But we do talk about it. It's, it's a big part of our game. It's something that's been extremely important to us for our entire – uh, my staff, we've been together a long time. It's It's been important to us all the time. So what I hope it is that we're just going to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. And hopefully uh, through the course of 40-minute game, it'll be big for us. Brad Friedlander. Yeah, Roy, um, you play Florida State tomorrow. And I'm wondering, in all your years of coaching, have you ever been in a situation where you're playing your third game in three nights and the team you're playing hasn't played in the tournament yet? 
No, that's one of those things, uh, Brett. Most of the time somebody says, have you ever done this? I say yes, but uh, uh, I don't know that I've ever faced this situation here. But uh, uh, it makes no difference. We're still playing. And uh, uh, at the end of the game, the team that scores the most points is going to be declared the winner, whether it's your third game in a row or your first game. Uh, but uh, uh, they play a lot of guys. We'll try to play a lot of guys, too. And you know, 18, 19, 20, 21-year-olds aren't supposed to get tired anyway. Thanks, Roy. Greg Barnes. Hey, Roy. Armando scored 10 straight points there late in the second half as Virginia Tech was was trying to make a run. Uh, he's had several games in a row where he's he's been pretty efficient. Are you seeing the level of consistency that, that you need to see out of him? Well, I think, you know, earlier in the year I said he was our most consistent player. There was no question about that, and he's been more up and down. But I think uh, the most the majority of those 10 points were on offensive rebounds and putbacks. Uh, uh, I think that he did a great job of getting to the boards and uh, finishing plays. One time Dayron went in and missed a finger roll. One time Kerwin missed a layup right in front of it. But uh, Armando finished his plays, and, and those things were huge for us, to say the least. But uh, – I look down there and I see 17 points, 13 rebounds, and that is really good. And uh, Armando, I'm always asking Armando for more. I'll never stop asking Armando for more because I think there's more there, and I'll start. To, I'll never stop pushing him. But I thought he was huge in the second half, along with uh, Leaky and, and RJ. Brendan. Yeah, Roy, I wanted to ask you about RJ. He hasn't always had the, the most consistent season this year, but what does it sort of say about him, the ability to stick with it? And, you know, what, what was it about the way that Virginia Tech was defending you guys tonight that enabled him to sort of get in a little bit of a groove? Oh, they're good defensively, guys, but I think the biggest thing, I thought we needed two ball handlers in there a little more to give us some, Caleb some help or RJ some help, and we went more with that lineup, and, and they were focused so much on – trying to cut down on what Kerwin was getting, that uh, uh, maybe they wouldn't guard RJ and, and Caleb as hard as they were guarding Kerwin. And it gave us, like I said, another ball handler. Because for us to have uh, 11 turnovers but only three in the second half, that is huge for us. But RJ's a tough kid. Uh, he's uh, been a good player for us all year. His uh, hasn't been as consistent, but, but neither is Caleb. And so we got to give guys a chance and hope that they play on game night. And I'm really happy for RJ. All right, the players are ready. So we're going to do last one here for Coach Andrew Jones. Go ahead, last one. Hey, Coach, the last four games of the regular season, you guys turned it over 80 times, leading to 95 points for opponents. But in two games here, 22 turnovers leading to 20 points. What has been the difference for you guys? Well, tonight in the second half, we didn't have the silly turnovers that ended up being open court turnovers. Uh, but I will tell you something crazy. Caleb goes in there and throws up a terrible shot in the first half and gets knocked down. And then Kerwin doesn't get back. And then Leakey did get back. But uh, I think it was Radford to beat him to the basket for a layup. So a bad shot's the same thing as a turnover. You know, I always say that bad shots and turnovers lead to runouts. And I think that uh, that was one right there that won't go down as a turnover, but it was the same thing. But Guys, it's, it, it's mentally and physically impossible to emphasize taking care of the ball or don't turn it over. Depends on if you want to be one of those negative, positive guys or not. But it's impossible to emphasize that more than we have emphasized it. And so, you know, it didn't work the last uh, four games when we had 80 turnovers, but uh, perhaps it worked a little better the last two nights. Thank you, Coach.